وما يستغن أما والبصير. The blind and the seeing are not equal. ولا الظلمات ولا النور nor are the depths of the darkness and light. ولا الظل ولا الحرور nor are the cooling shade and the scorching heat. وما يستوى الأحياء ولا الأموات neither are equal the living and the dead. إن الله يسمع من يشاء وما أنت بمسمع من في القبور. Behold, and he's telling Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, God can make hear whomever he wills, whereas thou cannot make hear such as those are dead in their graves. In anta illa nazir, thou are nothing but a warner. So a beautiful ayah from Surah Fatir. Um, where God talks about the blind and the seeing, the darkness and the light, the cooling shades and scorching heat. These are some contrasts he gives uh, to differentiate the states of those who obey Allah's command and law and those who rebel against it or forget about it and don't want to come back to it. And then the rhetorical question with each, how they can consider a life, how they can be equal, they cannot be. Those who are high in character and are pure, Allah gives them a metaphor of light compared to those who lack the good character and practice evil and therefore are contrasted as having been in the depths of the darkness. This juxtaposition can also be seen as a metaphor of knowledge and ignorance as Allah talks about subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Zamr. Kul huwa yastawi lazina ya'lamuna wal lazina la ya'lamun. Say, are those who know and those who do not know are equal? No. Only the possessors of intellect will reflect or tazakkar. Sometimes it's translated as remember or reflect. So who are these possessors of intellect? Who possess true knowledge and reality of the things? Allah calls them ulul al-bab. This al-bab, this Arabic word, comes from lub, which literally means the very core. And the core of human is what? Intellect. It's very interesting that Allah mentions the intellect here, and He didn't mention reasoning. But there, Sadhguru Mufassirin said that to employ reason upon this very core of human being, the intellect, to reflect. And this reminds us the covenant of Allah that we all took the, from the very core of our existence, our soul. And that's what Allah refers to when the intellect comes. That ayah goes, Surah Al Araf, Allah Sabarabbikum. He calls upon them to bear witness about themselves and ask them, Am I not your sustainer? To which they all answer, Yes, indeed you are, and we bear, bear witness. This covenant is with the real core, the innermost intellect, our soul that God took in Alam al Arwah, to all the souls who have been born and to all which are going to be coming till end of the time. But remember, he's, why he asked this question? Because he's aware of that that human intellect is limited, we will forget it. Especially when we try to reason the things which we can't comprehend. There the human intellect can get lost. Let me give you a little bit historic background about this. So, you know about Ibn Sina and Ibn Rushd, Abhi Sina and Averroes respectively, we call them uh, in Western world, very famous philosophers of Islam. And they have done tremendous amount of work um, by proving that the path of philosophy and the intellect compared to path of spiritual elevation of Waliullah, they all lead to the same reality and same conclusion. However, Imam Ghazali said this is incoherence of philosophers and he wrote a beautiful book. I just finished reading. Uh, it's an amazing book what he wrote. and he takes their own argument against them and reflects that philosopher can go to the point where human mind or intellect cannot comprehend, then they get lost. And same thing by Sheikh Ibn Arabi and Ibn Taymiyyah, they talked about when it becomes uh, to spirituality of human beings. The intellect is limited and Allah gives direct knowledge to those who then go higher in spirituality like he did to prophets and saints and waliullahs who are very close to him. <clears throat> and, and then that's where Allah describes them as muttaqeen. 
So you have to believe in this unseen to have that knowledge from God. Very beginning, the first very ayah of Surah Bakra after uh, Surah Fatiha is what? Alif Lam Mim. Zalikul kitabu la ibahi fihi hudan lil mutakin. Alaziran na yawminuna bil ghaib. Yawminuna bil ghaib. Wa yakimu salata wa ma. Wa ima razaknahum yuntikum. Allah says that this divine read, this Quran, let there be no doubt about it, is a guidance for all God conscious. God conscious who believe in the existence of what is beyond the reach of human perception. This is the very first ayah in Quran. We read after Surah Fatiha. You cannot go forward unless you really have this belief in the al -Rayf. That's the very core of human beings. <coughs> because beyond that, all scientific proof, all observation, they will not reach the level unless you go beyond, uh, unless you really believe in the al -Rayf the very existence of God, the life after death, the real nature of time, jinn, spiritual forces, and so on. Uh, philosophy and intellect cannot reach these uh, comprehensions, uh, and then this can only come with spiritual power. And Quran will actually will be a closed book for those who try to prove or disprove with intellect, and who do not believe in al -Bab. God will not open this book for them. This is only, so this is the very first condition to be a moment and then muttaqeen. Muttaqeen, Allah calls them. So this is not nothing new, the belief in al -Ghayab in these days in Western world uh, and for non-Muslims. This was from the very beginning. Quraysh leaders were very confused about this al and spirit, divine inspiration, prophet is getting, what is this all about? Angel Gabriel is coming and giving him uh, ayahs after ayahs. And they got together and they went to Medina. Uh, yes, sir, at that time it was called and they consulted Jewish rabbi at that time because they heard the Jewish rabbi know more knowledge about scriptures and dealing with prophets. So these rabbis were very smart. They said, go back and ask three questions to your prophet who is claiming to be the prophet. And this is a very historical um, uh, event that happened and, you know, we don't have time to detail all of this, but the three questions were about Ashab al-Kahab and then Zulkarnan, he asked them who was these people and Quranic ayahs came to Prophet in different surahs we have them to explain that and that how Prophet explained those. But the third question was very interesting. They asked him, go back and ask him what is this ruh he's talking about, the spirit, the unseen thing. And they thought that they knew it because you know they had Prophet too. So Allah's ayah came in Surah Isra for the Prophet to explain their answer Allah says they will ask thee about the nature of divine inspiration this is root say this inspiration comes at my sustainer's behest with his help and you cannot understand its nature or men you have been granted very real, very little real knowledge of it. So this is Allah answers like 14, 15, 100 or so ago. <coughs> you cannot have this knowledge because Allah didn't give it, give it to you. Even scientists of this day and age is such an advanced uh, technology are realizing that they are disproving their own theories. They're talking about God, God particles sometime and they have no clue about it. Um, there's a famous American um, Theoretical physicist uh, Richard Feynman, he calls, the more we know, the more we found out that we don't know anything. This is, they are realizing now. Uh, you all know about the CERN, the very uh, powerful uh, Hadron Collider and Swiss Prime border. Um, they're talking about this dark matter, uh, but they have no clue about it. So, this is the power of spirit, the power of Yaqeen in our life. And Allah has limited this power in human beings. Uh, and that's what it is all about. Fakhruddin Razi, a very famous philosopher uh, and Mufassir of Quran, theologian, he has written uh, Tafsir al-Kabir, they call it, the biggest Tafsir of Quran ever written. Very famous, and he lived in Iran and Afghanistan area. Uh, a great commentary and exegesis ever written till now, even. So he was once walking in the street um, amongst you know, his friends who were praising his work, and he was a bit, you know, proud about this. He was the scholar of his time. Nobody was beyond him. So.
So an old woman was walking around, uh, and then she said, who is he? She didn't know him. And someone from his friend said, he's Fakhruddin Razi. And you don't know him? You know, don't know about him? He's so knowledgeable that he has written 100 proofs of existence of God. So this woman smiled a bit and said, why would he need those 100 proofs unless he has 100 doubts about God's existence? So he heard this, Razi. And he, he changed right away at that moment. And what he used to pray after that, he used to pray, Oh Allah, grant me faith like that of that old woman. In other words, his hundred proofs were nothing as compared to that woman's belief in unseen, who was ignorant. So this was what he would start praying for himself. Give me the spiritual power of that old woman. So this is the power of human intellect. Let me go back to that ayah we started from Bama Yastamil Ahiyaya Amba. This was the final contrast God talks about people who are muttaki and who are not to differentiate between these two kinds and he calls them living and dead. And this is extreme contrast he's talking about. Of course there is obvious difference in living and death. But Ibn Kathir, like Mufassirin says, this is the dead heart Allah talks about. And it is in many other places in the, uh, in Quran as well to compare these. The people who <coughs> whose future has promise of growth and fulfillment, Allah opens their heart and who are inert they are at a road to perish, and Allah will close their heart and minds like dead people. Like they are buried, they don't hear. <clears throat> a similar surah in Quran, in Surah Namal, Allah talks about, إِنَّكَ لَا تُسْمِلْ مَوْتَ وَلَا تُسْمِلْ سُمَّ الدُّعَى إِذَا يَوَلَّوْ مُتْبِرِينَ Very though can make the, cannot make the dead hear, although cannot make the deaf hear this call, when they return their backs and go away. So they return their backs to Prophet ﷺ and he's inviting them to Islam, but they go away. So just as they cannot leave the blind of the heart out of their error, none can thou make, have, uh, thou make them hear uh, because they just don't want to surrender to us. Similar ayah comes again in Surah Rum, very almost exact ayah. And of course in Surah Bakra, the famous uh, words he uses, Someone look one omion flyer John. He calls them deaf, dumb, and blind, that they don't return. Don't return means they heard the message, they know it's true, but they are hypocrites. They won't return. So this return comes with Allah's awareness and His presence in the heart all the time, and it's not easy. We get distracted. We have hopes. We have fears. Uh, there's a famous tradition. Once Prophet Sallallahu asked. A, a man who was at his deathbed. How do you feel? And the man said, uh, I'm fearful, but I'm also hopeful. And the Prophet said, these are two conditions uh, which are hard, hard on you. And it's often not together at a moment like this, but Allah will grant you hope and He'll protect you from fear. And this is an amazing metaphysical phenomenon which happens near death and then further uh, Reports come from Zayd ibn Sabit. Salah so the Prophet said, Whoever makes the world most important matter, and Allah will confound his affair, he will fear poverty in his eyes when he's dying, that he's losing so much, and that's what's going to happen to him. It will be very hard on him to leave this world compared to that person who has least attachment to the world. Allah will settle his affair. He will have contentment in the heart and will go from this world without this grief, feeling of poverty. Allah will make his death easy for him. He will give him hope and that the person he will protect from fear. But the person whose heart is closed, fear will overtake. He lacks the hidayah, the guidance. And this all discussion corresponds to often many Quranic statements where Allah also says, God guides whoever He wills, or Him that who He wills to be guided. So it's, it's bilateral uh, action and reaction. Then Allah says further in this ayah which I started the khutbah with, Inna anta illa nazir, you are nothing but a warner. The job description and function of Prophet is to preach the truth. To the point 
to find out the right, of, uh, right way to warn men against the dangers of the evil and to show them the need of repentance. So this is Prophet's job. Think about it. It's very high status Prophet is given by the God with knowledge, with power of influence, miracles, and Allah is very clearly saying in the Quran, after this event, O Muhammad, uh, you are Rahmatul Alameen. But even you cannot make anyone to accept the truth or listen to the message. That's not your job. Your job is just to convey it. So how can this day and age, uh, Muslims who are trying to convey the message right and you know, they are rejected, uh, of course, we haven't have the capacity and strength of prophets, but that's what prophet, he's saying to prophet himself. <clears throat> but without, uh, you know, but with this all resistance from everybody, Allah also promised that inna nahnu nazalna zikra inna inna laha that I promise that I am the one who sent this message and I will protect the day the last day surah <coughs> uh, 15 surah 9 ayah when I was reading this uh, interpretation a very interesting thought you know we should discuss this look at the level of patience the prophet had when they were dealing with this ignorant uh, people around them think about this they were uh, they were the highest level Allah gave them with knowledge and especially Prophet Sallallahu he was living in the most ignorant people of Makkah. No prophet had come since uh, Prophet uh, Ismail to that particular part of the Arab area. And then generation after generation they they forgot him. And now he's dealing with these people. Years it took him to fall to have very few followers in Makkah. So this is the level of you know patience <coughs> he had. And look at our level, we get a little bit educated, we just don't want to sit with hey, you people, uneducated people or low people. We, we get arrogant right away. So I'm just comparing this uh, attitude of prophets that how difficult it is to even convince one person uh, with that much power in, the, in your hand too. Allah supports him. All the things prophet needed, Allah gave him, but then still is too hard. But again, revising it that people who are blind, no matter what you show them, Allah showed them miracles after miracles, they didn't believe. They just forgot. They just want to ignore. Akul Koli Haza, Mastakhullah Ali, Alakum Malisai al Muslimin, Mastakhullah, Nahu, Wallahu Rahim. <laughs> I would like to conclude this few ayah uh, to further portray this um, the blind and the and the seeing and the darkness and the light he talks about in different ayahs. Uh, so again further in ayah uh, Allah says about uh, this ignorance and uh, and then grief that they gave uh, to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says Wala nafsaka so let not thy soul be expended in regrets over them Allah says don't worry about them that's not your issue just give your message and leave up to me now <coughs> in Surah Anam Allah says فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهَ أَنْ يَهْدِهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرُهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ and whoever God wills to guide his bo bo bosom, his heart, he opens wide with willingness towards surrender. And whoever he wills, he lets go astray, his bottom, his heart, closes, tight, constricted. Nothing he can comprehend, even very obvious in front of him, he becomes blind. Surah Shams famous ayah To happy state shall indeed attain he who causes himself to grow in purity and truly lost he who buries it his soul he buries it in darkness and 
if he just opens his heart to the guidance, what Allah will do? لِيُخْرِجَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ Allah promises that He will take their faith and bring them out of the depth of the darkness to the light. He promises in Surah al May Allah open our hearts and make us willing to surrender to His will. May Allah make us from those He guides and not those who let us pray. Surah al-Lazina anamta alayhim, غَيْرِ الْمَغْلُوبِ alayhim. In path of those who he blesses and not those who have been condemned, not those who go astray. Ameen. Ibadullah, in Allah, ya amuru bil adli wal ahsan, wa ita zil kurba, wa inha nil fashai wal munkari wal bab, ya azukum la lakum tazakkaroon, wa zkurullah al azim, ya zkurukum mashkuruhu, ya zidukum, wa staghfiruhu, ya firlakum. وَاتَّقُوهُ يَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مَخْرَجًا وَأَقِمَ الصَّلَاةِ